All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Bradburn, and with me is my co-host, Matt Dixon. Tonight, we have a special guest. We have Coach Devin Bice, uh, who is the O-line coach at the University of West Alabama. Coach, welcome to the show. Sir, thank you. Glad to be here. Of course, I'm not going to lie now. If you're listening, we had to do this intro a few times because we had some issues and while the share screen is now working, my soundboard is no longer working. So it's nice. either one thing or another, but <laughs> coach, welcome to the show. We kind of did our, our little half-ass uh, applause for you. So coach tonight is going to talk a little bit about counter. Um, again, just to go quickly into coach's background, he was at Creekside High School here in Jacksonville, Florida. He went to NC State as a GA, then to Center College in Kentucky, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, now the O-line coach at the University of West Alabama. So, Coach, uh, we're super excited to listen to you talk a little bit of counter tonight, which is every good DC's worst nightmare is a good GT counter. So let's go ahead and excite Matt and terrify me to the point where I don't sleep tonight. So go ahead and take it away. Yes, sir. Excited to be here um, and ready to talk about counter. And we and here at West Alabama, we run it a couple different ways, and, and I'm excited to, to kind of show you guys what we do and, and uh, kind of put it into works. But uh, kind of just going through. Uh, me, like and like Coach said, uh, at the University of West Alabama, offensive line coach. My background before we kind of go uh, further into it, from Bonifay, Florida, the great state of Florida. Uh, played at the Citadel, uh, was initially a tight end. And then uh, when I got to college, we went to the triple option, and they were like, hey, let's, let's move you to offensive line. And being a team player I was, I, I went to tackle and started there for three years and had a great experience. Um, and like Coach was saying, so I just finished up my ninth season as a coach. Uh, initially was at a 1A school in the Panhandle, Holmes County High School, and then moved my way to Jacksonville. I uh, went to Nice High School, coached there, Creekside, and then got my break in college. Like I've always wanted to do is coach in the college. So I went to NC State, Center College, and now I'm going into my third season this fall at West Alabama. All right, so let's talk about counter. All right, so before we kind of get into – the play and all that, I want to kind of just break everything down for you like I do my players and, and teach it from the ground up. So I want to teach you my terminology. Um, so when I talk about my power step, that's just the force, the forced second step that you're putting in the ground, jab step, just picking it up, putting it down with your first step, the square pull and the skip pull, okay? So when I talk about those techniques, you'll understand what I'm talking about and the verbiage, okay? But also going into the blocking technique. So the high wall, that's going to be, the center or even the guard uh, blocking back and trying to make that block and not allow that defender to cross his face. Okay. So that's the high wall technique. Okay. The next one's going to be the brace and the high knee gallop. Okay. I know some people call it the gallop, but for me, the brace is going to be that guard, the play side guard. He's just going to pick it up, put it down and brace and really just block that defender that's on him until that high knee gallop goes through that. And then he's going to pull the sink and take it with him. So when I talk about brace, high knee combo, play side, that's going to be what we're talking about there. Okay. Next thing is going to be the match. So here we're a true RPO team. Um, so we're always having the option of being able to throw the ball and always calling a route. So I don't have my guys, my backside tackle picking hinge like normally, like a lot of guys do. I match. So what that means is just basing and just making sure that you after the contact, you're going to get into more of a stay square pass uh, type block so the guy doesn't penetrate and go up the field where the quarterback, if he does pull it, he has the option to throw and have time. Okay. Uh, so here's the skip pull. So this is going to be uh, the technique in counter is going to be the tight end, or if we go GT counter where the, the tackle's pulling, he'll do the skip pull. Okay. And I'll talk about that technique and show you film on that. And then the square pull, that's just going to be your open up, pull, kick out type uh, technique where you're just going downhill tight to, to the line of scrimmage. Okay. All right. So talking about techniques, now getting into the play. Okay. So I have two types of counters that we run here. So the first one's just going to be your, your GY counter. Um, so this one that I'm showing right here is just going to be your guard pulling, kicking out with that square pull and the tight end doing a uh, shuffle read the first puller square going up to the uh, to the, the the linebackers, okay? Now, here at West Alabama, I give the option for the center to pull as well if there's a three technique back here. So if there's a three technique, 
I'm not going to make my goal, my my center go all the way back and block that guy. He's going to be able to pull, and I'm just going to base that that guard and have the, the the center pull. Okay, so you'll get to see that technique as well. But just going into it, so breaking it down even more. All right, so here's the the play. So I go from play side tackle. That's going to be your high knee, like we talked about earlier. Your play side guard is going to be your base, your brace technique, where he's blocking and taking over that that three technique once he hits that. All right, the center, he's just going to do that high wall technique, that angle reach drive, and not let that guy cross his face. And then the backside guard's pulling, doing that square pull. Backside tackle is going to do that match where he matches that guy and stays square and get into that pass protection type block. All right, and then with that tight end, he's got to understand who's pulling. It could be the center or the guard. So he's got to understand his technique because if it's the center, he can go a little faster because that's going to be the center's going to be. Uh, closer to the defensive end. If it's the guard, he's got to do more of a shuffle, give some time for that guard to get there and kick, and then and then wrap up. Okay, um, but this is going to be your your just your GY counter. All right, the next one I'm jo- I'm showing the GT counter. So this is going to be your guard and tackle. And the way we teach it here, it's always going to be the guard and tackle, no matter what. Okay, the guard and tackle is going to pull. The guard's going to do your square pull kick out. Your tackle is going to do the uh, the skip pull, like I talked about earlier, and read that first puller's block and then wrap up for the first thing uh, inside the box. So play side linebacker, it could be the the Sam, it could be the Mike, whatever whatever plays out. Um, but I also don't like to tell my guys it's going to be the Sam every time because it might not. It, it might just determine what if it's odd front or or if it's stack or something, it might change the defender. But we, I just, so I just say first thing in the box, okay? Um, so here... My guards call the combos, okay? My center's calling the defense. My center's calling how many linebackers in the box. He's, he's calling the mic. My guards are calling the combos. So you can see here um, that he's calling the combo tag. I have different tags for different plays, um, so everybody's different. But he's going to call the combo tag to tell the tackle they're comboing together. And then the guard, the backside guard, is going to tell who's pulling. Okay, so it could be the center, could be the guard if it was the other counter, but with this one, it's going to be the guard. All right, so that's going to be your GT counter, and I'll show all those, all that film, and kind of break it down even more. But I just want to make sure I showed, I showed the the drawing. Okay, so drill work. So I love to show what I do first, put everything in drill work, break it down, and then get into a game film. I t- I'm going to te- I'm treat y'all just like you're my players, right? So. Day one, I want to show the the bottom and work my way up to the most advanced, so I can so I can get everybody kind of grasped in there. Okay, so sled work. This is the first thing we do every day. We get on the sleds. We work the the first two steps in the ground, and this is really good for the brace technique that we were talking about earlier on that play side uh, guard with the combo. Okay, so picking it up, putting it down with that first step, getting the second step in the ground, and really working that defender with tight hands. Okay. So I do the sled every day. It's a great technique. Now I don't like how this is a straight pad. I mean, I can get into a lot of different things. I like it to be curved and all that stuff, but just getting my guys in the mindset to start practice off. Like we're getting on the sled. We're working our footwork. We're working our hands. We're driving this sled until I blow the whistle, getting that mindset in there and working that every day is it's an everyday drill, right? Just making sure they have that mindset and work in those because you can never overwork footwork and hand placement, okay? All right, the next thing, work in the brace. Oh, Coach, I'm going to yeah. stop you right here. Matt, yes, this is your favorite piece of equipment. <laughs> and for oh, those of you listening power. on the podcast, and I always do have to remind you, Coach Bice, just remind you, we, we do do this on a podcast as well, so be super descriptive with your words. Yes. But this is Matt's favorite uh, piece of equipment. And, Coach, I'm going to stop you because I want Matt just to describe this piece of equipment for everyone. <laughs> All right, everybody, this is the pan sled. This is the Ray Crowther pan sled. Yes. No advertising here. Ray Crowther pan sled. If you don't have one for your offensive line, you need it. That's how yeah. you teach balance. That's how you teach proper footwork and, and how to work together on blocks um, and, and how to um, achieve leverage. Uh, it, it's it's a phenomenal piece of equipment. So, Coach, take us through what you do with that. Hold on, yeah. Matt. Don't don't Ooh. say don't say we're not advertising, uh, Crowler. If you're listening, we will advertise for you. You call me, we'll get this sponsorship set up. We can do the Matt Dixon, you know, <laughs> pan sled, you know, podcast for all I care. I, so, 
Then we'll stay. We'll say uh, no free advertising. Crowther, Crowther, you owe us. <laughs> yeah. Contact us. Yeah. All right. The, I'll, we'll give you the I'll invoice. Help you. <laughs> we're like the guy that you see that shows up on the on the clips on TikTok where he just walks up and like washes. You know, we're the guys that wash the the windshield at the car. Yes. We're like, yo, it's five bucks. Let's go. <laughs> so sorry about that, coach. I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead and uh, no, get into your drill right here. And, and I love the Crowther. I use it for zone work. I use it for um, brace. Like I'm about to show you, I, I use it for the high knee. I mean, this is a great, great uh, equipment tool um, and you can use it for anything you can use it one man you can use it for two guys you i mean it's it's awesome um but this is just my brace drill so this is going to be just like we were working on the sled okay so i'm working the guard right the guard technique right here of just bracing taking half a man working square picking it up putting it down with your footwork waiting for that that gallop technique that tackle to come in there and hit that guy over so you can take it over even more right so just breaking it down man just really working these guys on leverage, like Coach was saying mm. earlier, just trying to get underneath. And the one thing that I want to show you guys is I know a lot of O-line coaches, they teach, okay, when we're in a combo, we're going to use our flipper, we're going to use our shoulder. I want to use my hands. I want to get I want to get the, the grip on that shoulder pad. I want to make sure that once that guy knocks this the defender over, I can just rip him and take him with me, okay? So – I, you can tell, you can see my guys right there trying to get their hand with that strike in there and really get that everything nice and tight to really focus on. Hey, once I get that 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 defender over to me, I can take him with me and grab him and and use that. I don't I don't believe in the flipper technique and all that stuff. Uh, I really want to use the strike and and really get my hand placed where it needs to be. Okay, Do you have so, a particular aiming point for that hand? Yeah, so that hand's going to be just in the middle of his sternum, right there in the middle of his pads and his chest. Because the other the other hand, I know I'm not working on this drill, but with the other hand, you're gonna get your your hand on the shoulder pad, okay? So it should be if I'm striking number 65 right here, it should be in the middle of the of the shoulder pads, and the other hand should be right there on the outer shoulder pad. So then once that once my tackle comes and hits that over, I can pull the sink, and I'll show you gotcha. that in a minute um, of that technique. But <clears throat> he's we're working the middle of that pad right there to to focus on get my hands in the middle of his sternum, in the middle of his pads. So then that can, we can be really consistent with that strike. Okay. And, and you can see so important, so important coach. As you talked briefly about the not using the flipper. And yes. for me, what I always used to teach was the elbow placement. We want to keep those yep. elbows nice and tight and we want to be able to deliver a punch and not get the elbows out. So a flipper to me was completely against what I did. Oh, uh, yeah. you got to be I mean, one way or the other. You, you yeah. should never, have your elbow out and like have your hand lower than your elbow. Like in my opinion, there's never a time in offensive line play where your elbow should be higher than your wrist in my opinion. Okay. Um, but just, just teaching your guys to keep the tight elbow, like you're just talking about, and you can see my guys being tight with that elbow, keeping everything nice and tight with that shoulder um, and just working square is huge. Right. So you can see right here in this drill, we're working to the whistle. I'm, I'm going to blow a whistle and always have an indicator of when they can come off, right, when we stop the drill. All right, so here's another look at it. So you can really see, hey, quick feet, get them in the ground. You should never make contact in the first step. You're always trying to make it second to third step. That means you're getting your feet in the ground, hot feet, making contact, striking nice and low with your hands down in sternum like we talked about. All right, this, this is a great drill for that brace technique. So, Coach, right there, obviously, two versions of the same drill. Were you guys a little further back on the second version? Did I get that right, or I'm just looking at it from a different yeah, angle? It's, it's the same just, thing. It depends on the, the, the player. <laughs> so, like, the first one I'm going to show you, these are these are center and guard. So, this is going to be gotcha. more of your interior where they're, like, tight. The next one's going to be your tackles, right? So, this is okay. my tackle. And I make it where everybody does it. So, like, this next one I'm about to show you, there's a tight end in here. Right? There's a tight gotcha. end. Gotcha. So, everybody's doing this drill because at the end of the day, Hey, a tight end and a tackle might have to do this because it's off. Yeah. A guard and a, and a guard and a guard and a center might have to do this because it's off front. So everybody has yeah. to do it the same and kind of get that embedded in their minds with the technique because you never know when you have to use this and you don't want to have to pull out a toolbox that you never done before, right? So yeah, absolutely. Um, so great question. Like, so I make it where it's all about where you are on the field. So this tight end, he's going to be a little further back because the center's close to the line of scrimmage, right? This guy right here is a center. So he's going to be really tight with this technique. So all depending on where you are, take uh, player wise is going to be where you line up. Okay, but here's a center and a tight end working the same technique, right? 
tight ends. I think he's great. He gets his feet in the ground. He strikes. He's nice and low, driving that opposite hand. I think the the center is not bringing his feet with him, okay? But I think he does a great (laughs) job with a strike, right? It might be because that tight end is going a little faster than him. But I always – and I'm always – Showing good and bad. Like, I think you sh- there's always a coachable moment every drill, everything you do, good and bad, right? So I'm not just going to always show good things. I'm, I'm going to show things that you can, there's always a coachable moment, right? So that's the brace on the crowler. So this next one's the high knee, the gallop. So with this technique, you're trying to get three steps in the ground. So you're going to step with that, that front foot, then that second foot, and then off that second step, you're really going to try to, gallop into that and skip into the defender and knock that thing over and your and your landmark on the defenders is hip right i always teach it like you're trying to be nice and low and knock that hip over because the body goes where the hip goes okay so you can see right here they're trying to get nice and low get those three steps in the ground knock that thing over and you can see right here they're square that's the biggest thing that's the biggest thing you got to stay square you got to keep that opposite hand out of there and the same thing, I'm teaching the strike with the hand, not the flipper. So I'm trying to strike with that hand on the hip and explode through it. Yeah. Okay. So you can see right here, number 74 does a great job of getting the feet in the ground, explode through with that, that strike. And then I blow the whistle, they come off onto the linebacker, right? So there's always a, a coachable moment, always something that you could do as a coach, make them drive. Yeah. On the normal high knee, you're trying to knock it over quick and get off. But in this drill, I'm trying to teach them everything's with power. So I want to really drive through that that block and then come off when I tell you to. Okay. So this is a great example of the gallop high knee technique, staying nice and low, staying nice and square, keeping that opposite hand off, out of there. Okay. I have a couple uh, hey, couple Coach, of these I, so you can see at each I, angle. I, I, yeah, I got one question while you're working through these. Yes, uh, one of the big questions we typically get from young offensive line coaches that we've had a few times was, you know, kind of how do they implement the gallop technique? Is there a footwork drill you do before you get on the sled or something else you do to kind of work on that before they get to that point? Yes. So I, I didn't put it in here, which, I mean, now that you say that, I that could be something I implement starting uh, <clears throat> now. But I, I do a, a gap circuit. Um, it's more of an EDD where I do it every day, just like the sled, where you work the gallop, you're working the pulls, you're working the the uh, the high wall, you're doing all these things on air. So then when you get to these moments like you do on the sled that you're ready for. It, OK, um, but that's a perfect you just get a board right here. And that's the way I teach it. You get a board and put it right there in front of him. And you're really teaching him. He's got to get his steps in the ground to get past that board with that gallop. Okay, so if you take your fir- your three steps, you should be able to get past that board and then work vertical. Okay. So for those of you listening, um, he's talking about laying a board at 45 degrees from the inside foot and working the gallop over that. Yes. Correct, Coach? Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> really working um, those three steps to try to get past that board uh, with your EDDs, right? So like you said, how do I work that without having a sled or something in front of me? That's going to be more of – Hey, I got to get my three steps in the ground, trying to get past this board, and then work vertical square. Okay. Very good. And uh, while we're on the topic, we got a question from the audience. Yes. Which it says, uh, "How do you get the gallop hand on the hip without using the forearm while keeping the wrist above the elbow?" So, how are you using the gallop hand on the hip? Yes. So you can see right here, right. So my landmark, like <laughs> I said, I'm trying to get my shoulder and my hand on his hip. Okay. So. When I make contact, my hand, my shoulder, and the side of my neck should be on the defender's body, okay? So you can see right here um, with this this drill, everything's trying to be nice and tight, and I'm trying yeah. to make sure I make contact with the palm of my hands and everything tight with my elbow close to my body and explode through. So when I'm exploding through, and you're going to see it when, we, uh, when I go through the drill work in this next step, I'm trying to make sure that I'm nice and low. I'm galloping through my first three steps. And I make, when I make contact, it should be my shoulder, the palm of my hand, and my ne- my, the side of my neck. Keep my head out of there on his hip. Okay? I know it's, it's going to be tough because a lot of my tackles, they're 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, um, trying to get nice and low and trying to get on somebody's hip. But if you, if you make that contact with those three initial points, even if you're just a, above the hip or right there on his side, you're going to explode through that and be able to move him. 
Okay. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't want to use the forearm. I want to make sure that I'm using the palm of my hands and to keep it open and keep my elbow tight to my side. Awesome. Okay. And you can see like in this drill, <clears throat> he's striking with that elbow. He's, he's striking with that open hand, elbows tight to his body, keeping his head out, driving until I blow the whistle and he, he's got to explode up like there's a linebacker. And in this drill, look, there's even a tight end. So the, the player closest to me, that's a tight end. So he's working it too. We're getting the tight ends in there. We're getting all the O-linemen in there working the same technique because depending on the defense, you might have to do it too as a tight end. Yeah. Okay, so here's the last look at it. So you can see trying to get those three steps in the ground, trying to stay square, trying to stay low, explode through the hip. And you can see just like if I pause it right there, he's got the his hands right there in that guy's hip. Okay. He's exploding through, trying to really unleash that power of that. He just exploded through, and then he's going to work square off to the linebacker. But the biggest thing, too, is keeping that off hand out of that block. Because if you get that hand involved, you're going to you're going to turn. You're going to stay. You're going to not be able to come off on the linebacker square. Okay. So that's a that's a big one for us. Really big. All right, so this next drill, okay, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on. So at the bottom right of this screen is going to be the high wall with the centers and the guards, okay? So the centers, the tight ends, the guards are working this high wall. And then over here to the left is going to be your brace and high knee combo, okay? So with the guard and, and tackle, okay? And you can see this is a great example. So the guard, number 72, he's trying to strike with that inside hand, the left hand in the middle of his sternum. And that right hand is going to be on that that shoulder pad. So once the tackle comes through, you see him trying to pull the sink right there. And the reason why I say pull the sink is I always give a descriptive. Like if you're doing a demolition in a house and you can tear up anything you want and there's a sink in the wall, you're going to try to pull that thing out, right? <laughs> and, and I always want to make it where I don't want to try to pull towards me. I want to pull across my body because there's more force in my legs and in my body trying to torque it across my body. So – that's how I de describe it to them, right? You're trying to pull that sink out of the wall and pull that defender across your body, okay? So really good job by the guard right there. 58, you can see, working the high knee, getting his three steps in the ground. He's square. He's on the hip, exploding through, working up to the backside linebacker. That's a really good job by 58, working vertical. And, like, when I tell those guys, once you come off on, from the defender of that high knee, you want to get off vertical because – the linebacker is going to flow. He's not just going to yeah. stand there. He's going to flow. So I want to meet him at the point of attack. So that's going to be where I need to work vertical and meet him where he's going to try to flow to me. Okay. Coach, talk to me a little more about this drill right here. I mean, I know what the guy's holding, but just for the audience, yes. is that a medicine ball in his hand? That, that the guy, the guy that ball. is simulating being blocked is holding a medicine ball. And why you guys use a medicine ball there? Yes, sir. So I have a medicine ball <laughs> and I have it more. It's going to be more towards his hip. Okay. So more lower not just up at his chest so more lower towards the the hip where the tackle is going to come through with that high knee i want to try to protect my guys right i don't yeah. want to make them a dummy so i tell them hey you want to hold that ball where he's going to make contact with your hip okay so that allows my tackle to really work that technique and really gallop through that and explode through and try to move the defender okay so yeah he's holding a med medicine ball um, and we try to have it where it's going to be where the landmark of where that tackle is going to come through and knock it over on the hip. That makes sense. Yeah. So, and you can see I'm going back and forth, right? So I have a drill here and then we go uh, one at a time. So I can, I can able to, I'm able to look at everything and really work where I have to fire and try to get every, everything going. I hate trying to make everybody go at once because then you ain't re really able to coach it. Okay. So just trying to get through this drill. Um, efficiently as possible but you like i said over here we're working the high wall so at the bottom right of the screen the center's working hey i'm trying to uh back block this guy can't let him cross my face so i'm really trying to work that upfield shoulder and try to not make it where he can't cross my face as well so there's a lot of things going on in this drill um that are very efficient all right so here's another look at the the gallop with the brace so really good job right here by 58, knocking over, hitting the medicine ball nice and low on the hip, exploding through, and working vertical. That's a really good job by 72, the guard. He may a need bracing. a better defender there. I know. Right? He needs to give him a look. 
that's a freshman. Uh, you know how it is. But um, really good job by 72 of bracing. And that's why I call it brace because you're really wait. You're you're blocking and you're trying to get movement, but you're really waiting for that that tackle to come through and then you can really finish your job. Yeah. All right, so here's a closer look. So these two right here, my start and right tackle, right guard, they're really good players. So really focusing on the brace and the high knee. 75 does a great job with it. He's He explodes through. He's nice and low. Gets movement. Now, the only thing I don't like is that right hand involved. Okay. And you can see 65 of his, his landmark, right? He got his hands, his right hand on the sternum, left hands on the shoulder, waiting for the tackle to, to knock it over. And he's... He's taking, he's pulling the sink. Now, another way you can really help, and you can see, I know a lot of guys, you, you, you're not really able to see it, but we have a, I have a band that I put on the offensive oh, line. Oh, yeah. Well. So to keep their hands tight and their elbows tight to their body, I put a band on their wrist. So I, they really had to focus on striking with their hands tight, keeping their elbows tight, and keeping, uh, keeping their wrist tight. So that really f- helps you focus, especially with the brace of, yeah. Hey, I got to focus on putting that hand in the sternum, other hand on the shoulder, or I can't, I can't really get there. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I put bands on my guys too, which will help keep everything tight with their strike. Yeah. I didn't even notice that until you pointed it out. Coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and I love it, man. Like the guys hate it because they feel like they're in, in prison, but at the same time they love it because, Hey, I'm not extending my elbows. I'm keeping everything yeah. tight from my, my stance to strike. And guys, if you don't have a band, we used to use hand shields and make yep. them squeeze the hand shield between the elbows yep. to keep towel. it up. You can do towels on, towel. on, the, uh, yep. on the elbows as well. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Okay, so this this last one um, is working a two eye. So everything that we've done so far is having a three technique for the brace high knee gout combo. Okay, but you're like, well, what happens if he's not a three? What what does the tackle do? Well the tackle is still going to go through his footwork. It's going to be more of a shuffle though, because if that three take, if that two eye slants to become a three, he has to be ready to knock it over. Yeah. Okay. But if that guy, if that two eye stays a two eye, then he's going to shuffle. Oh, hips away. I'm working vertical now. Okay. So I like to work that in my drill work too, just so the tackles understand. You can see the tackles going through his footwork. He's going to high knee. Oh shoot. Hips away. And now I can get up vertical now. Okay. And then the whole time, if he's a two eye the whole time, the guard is thinking he's by himself. It's a it's a bonus if he slants to be a three because now I have help. But yeah. I, I'm always thinking worst case scenario. If I'm the guard, I'm thinking shoot, I'm by myself. He's a two eye. I got to get him and, and stay on. If he slants to become a three, the tackle can help. Okay, so that's what I have in the guard's mind is hey, I got to base him and, and keep him out of the play and stay square as long as possible. All right, so here's the next point. So this is pods, okay? So this is putting everything together. This is a center, the left guard, and right guard working against two defense alignment, okay? So like I said, this is going to be counter to the right, okay? So we have a three technique on the left guard. That means the center is going to pull, okay? So center's pulling, left guard's basing that three technique. The right guard, it's a shade, so he's going to be by himself, which yep. means if he's a shade, the tackle's going to be able to go up to the linebacker now because there's nothing that the, the tackle can hit, okay? So just working pods, really good drill. We do this uh, almost every day with the D-lineman to make everything game-like, okay? I'd rather do game-like drills and do everything against uh, good people, one-on-ones and all those things instead of just doing drill work because you know how as, a, as oh, yeah. an offensive line coach, we got 45 minutes to Indy if we don't. <laughs> And I ain't trying to do 45 minutes of being on cones and pads. Like I want to, I want to do inside. I want to do pause. Yeah. I want to do one-on-ones. I want to do as much as I can against the D line to get my guys ready because here we have a lot of young guys and the only way they can get experience is by game likes uh, drills. So yeah. this is a great Coach, drill. Yes, going sir. Going back to this real quick. Sorry. So when you have a shade on the center, all right, you talked about a two eye. Does that change at all with the shade on the center? Is the tackle still kind of taking that horizontal step before it gets vertical? Yes, sir. So he's treating it just like he would a two eye in that case. He's treating it just like a two eye, um, because okay. at the end of the day, what's shade the worst that can happen? Yeah, he can slant and become <laughs> a three. So yeah. my tackle's got to make sure that he's ready for that. And I, like I said earlier, I'm always teaching my guys worst case scenario. 
right? Yeah. You never know what's going to happen, especially in the league that we play. We we see a lot of odd. We see a lot of movement. We see a lot of different things. So I'm always teaching the worst case scenario. If we don't see that, it's a bonus, baby. We can do what we want to do. But yeah. I always want to make sure my tackle's ready for that. So he's still going to do that shuffle, high knee, gallop technique. If he doesn't come, I'm up to the linebacker now. Okay, so this is a great drill with the interior guys. And you can see really working the strikes, really working, um, just trying to stay square and all that. Like, this is awesome. 72, he's only a freshman, man. He's going to be a really good player. He's from Huntsville. And you can see him getting after that defender right there to the whistle blows. That's what we want. Okay. All right, so that's going to be the combos. That's going to be your one-on-one -on -one dri uh, blocking drills, all those things. Now we're going to get into pulls, okay? So like I talked about earlier, you're going to have your skip pull, you're going to have your square pull, all those different things. So this first drill is working the tight ends technique, okay? So the tight ends got to understand, is the center pulling or is the guard pull, right? And he's going to determine his technique on what who's pulling and how he needs to get there. So with this drill, I have my GA, my student assistant, acting like the da the offensive lineman, and he's got to read his his block. Okay, so trying to get the tight ends involved. I love getting my GA involved. He's young; he needs to move around a little bit more than <laughs> I do. Right, and you know that you know you know that Kyle being a GA, you're always doing crazy things. But this is a great drill. Of uh, I have the boards down so they can see the landmarks. I have the defenders with with med balls um, because. I teach my guys, even the tight ends, I teach my guys, when you're approaching a linebacker, you got to approach them under control. You got to try to get the distance away from them, close that distance down, and then you want to make sure that you get leverage and you're keeping your strike and your elbows nice and tight and try to treat it like he's a down line, okay? So you're trying to make contact and drive after contact, okay? I hate when guys are just out of control trying to just make a kill shot when it should be under control, get on his toes, block them into the whistle because and you're going to see in my in my game film there's times where we might not get to that linebacker in proper technique but if you stay on him and block him into the whistle the yeah. running back the running back's going to run off of you okay so if you block him and try to stay square and, and do what you need to do and try to hold him as long as possible we'll we'll, we'll cut off okay so this is a great drill right here just getting the tight ends involved having them read the the first puller and approach it we do rapid fire and everything we do, right? So you go back and forth. We're getting both sides. Tight ends under control. You can see his footwork. He's down. He's running now under control, attacking that down line, that uh, linebacker. Really good drill for them. Okay. Yeah, that's a – Coach, I like this drill a lot, um, yes. not only because the amount of reps you're getting on it, but, you know, if you're a high school guy, so many of the guys now run 20 personnel because they don't have a true oh, yeah. tight end, so they kind of have that – Fullback H back, and when you yeah. talk about tight end here, that that's what you're running, right? He's in kind of that H back set, like a lot of people do in twenty personnel. And like Coach said, all he is is right. A coach is being the puller, the kick guy, oh, yeah. and the yep. tight ends wrapping to a to another player. And he just kind of yep. nice setup just to work that time and time again to to really time that up. I think this is a cool drill. So that he's just putting right H back or however you want to call it the the F on the left or the yep. Y. Who again, all these letters you guys use on offense. <laughs> He's wrapping to the right like it's counter, and then he has another guy waiting on the right, and he's going to go back left. So it's a really yeah. nice way to get a rapid fire drill. Um, if you're a high school guy, who's got to get a bunch of reps in five minutes. This is probably you probably only have three tight ends. This is a great way to get him each five reps real quick and, oh, yeah. and move on. Easily. So easily, and like and like you're saying, like with our guys, we align our tight ends. He could be more of a fullback inside yep. the tackle, or he could be outside the tackle in a fullback position. H H back. So we like to work the different looks too to make it where the defense can't just pick up, oh, they're going to run counter because he's lined up here. We can yeah. line him up anywhere, anywhere in the backfield and still be able to run counter, you know what I'm saying? So like you were saying, this is a great drill, putting boards down to simulate the offensive line blocks and their landmark and just getting rapid fire. And and the guys know too, like once they go, they got to become the def the defense. So you can see they're, they're trading med balls. They're doing everything because we've taught it. Yeah, day one – it's going to take a little bit of time because you're walking through all this and kind of showing them how everything runs. But once you get going, man, and the, and the players understand, this is a great drill. You can do a lot of different things um, using this drill and, and going rapid fire back and forth. Yeah. All right. So this is the, the next one is now working both pullers. Okay. So now you're working the guard and the tight end. 
working the center and tight ends, getting both of them involved, and you're still going back and forth, right? So right here, I got the yeah. guard and tight ends working the drill. So now you have to have four people on defense. So now you have to have a guy where the guard is going to kick out and you have to have the, the linebacker for the tight end. So this is a really good drill to, to get everybody involved and have the, the tight end read the first puller's block too. So that's the next step of uh, what we saw earlier. Okay. Uh, so this is the same thing going the other way. So here's my center pulling. And, and when I'm, and I tell you too, like it depends on who's up. I'm telling them, Hey, center, center's up. So the tight end has to know, Hey, I'm a little further. I have to go now. It's not just yeah. a shuffle. I like every time that somebody gets up, I'm like, who's up? And the center's got to tell me hey, center's up. So the tight end knows he is, he's got to go faster. So now you what's see. your call? Like in a game, how do they alert? Does the, does the tight end just have to know the center's pulling on this? Cause I have a three backside so, or yeah, do you guys so make a we, call? We teach it both ways. So I teach it where the tight ends have to learn the techniques. Okay. Yeah. So the tight end 82 right here, if we're in a game, he's got to look and see, okay, there's a three technique to my side, the center's pulling. But like I said earlier, my guards are making all the calls. So my guard is going to tell me, he's going to say me or you, right? So if he's going to pull, he's going to say me, me, me. If he, if the center's going to pull, he's going to say you, you, you. So now gotcha. the, the tight end understands that, that means either the center or guards pulling, depending on yep. the calls, right? Now it might change game to game. It might not be me and you, but yeah, yeah no, they, we're communicating that, and the tight end also has to learn what techniques on the backside so he knows who's pulling, right? Yeah. And if you, and if you teach it both ways, now you don't have any confusion, right? Because I, I've heard it before. Tight end's going to say, "Well, I didn't hear the call." Yeah. Well, did you not look at the technique? Did you not see a three? You're standing up in the backfield. How can you not see what's up there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I teach it both ways so there's no confusion and the tight end should know. Coach, uh, so we this got is a another... great example. My center pulling, kicking out, tight end, wrapping up for the linebackers. Okay. Got a question. Coach, we, we got another yes. question for you. Um, question is, are you emphasizing hands on the kick out block as well? Yeah, that's a, great, that's a great question. So perfect world, yes. I would love to still have the open palm, but at the end of the day, if you're kicking out, all I really want is your right. If you're going to the right, your right shoulder and your body in front of him. If you're going to the left, your left shoulder and your body in front of him. Because at the end of the day, it's going to happen quick. So I don't yeah. want to say, hey, you got to use your, your palm and you got to really focus on when I've, I've seen it. My center pulls and you're going to see on game film. My center pulls and the guy hits him in the mouth now. You're going to yeah. have no, no way to focus on, oh, how do I make contact? All I'm really focusing on is your shoulder, your play size shoulder, and your body to be in front of him. Because, like I paused it here, if I'm going to the right and I kick out with my right shoulder, that means my body's in front of the defender. Yeah. So he now can't cross my face and make the play behind me. Okay. And you're going to see a lot too where we get wrong armed and that defensive end is trying to get up the field inside yep. of my puller. We're teaching the log. I'm trying to yeah. teach my. My my puller, hey, you got to make sure that you get your body in front of him and get back square and drive your feet so that second puller can go around you. Okay, so yeah, perfect world. If I'm going to break it down, yes, I would love to teach that open hand palm, that elbow tight, and kick with my my palm and my shoulder to explode through. But at the end of the day, if you just make contact with your hand and try to get that strike in there I'm, with your shoulder and get that hand in there, I'm good. Okay, I just want you to be able to make contact with that play size shoulder and stay square and keep your body in front of his. Okay, so this is a great drill, like I said, of just making sure you can see my, my center is trying to make contact with that right shoulder, explode through, make a room for that that tight end to, to wrap up behind. Them. All right, so this is the next step. So we just saw GY counter pulling the center guard and tight end. Now this is going to be guard tackle. Okay, so this is going to be the GT counter pull drill. So this is just the next step, right? You can see my guards pulling, kicking out. You can see my tackle doing the skip pull, trying to get depth, trying to get on a different level than the guard, read his block, same approach. So I want to make sure I'm under control to that linebacker. This is a really good, this is a really good job right here by both of them. Now my guard could be a little more uh, of having a base through that kick out, but you can see he's really focused on making contact with that left shoulder so he has his body in front of the defender and he can't cross his face. So this is a really good job, really good job by the tackle of reading that block, wrapping up, 
slowing down, making contact, and exploding through that block. All right. So that's all the drills. Any questions on the drills? Anything <laughs> that we've shown so far? No, that's I'm perfect, good. Coach. Okay. As we go right. here, Coach, just be super descriptive of the front yeah. and everything as we go through. Yes, all right. So this first one, it's inside drill. Okay. So we got inside drill. There's no receivers. This is just the, the box. Okay. And what we're running right here is counter. It's going to be G, uh, G Y counter. Okay. To the left. And I love this drill, but I also hate it because we're always going to have a free hitter with the defense. And I know Kyle, you love it. We're always going to have a safety in there. You're always going to have an extra guy in there to make contact to make y'all feel good. Yeah. Of but course. at the end of the day, I'm okay if the free hitter makes the play because that means yeah. we're getting at least five to ten yards, right? So this first play is going to be countered to the left. We have a two-eye to the left on the left guard. We have a three technique on the right guard, okay? So our call is, te is that's technically going to be even front, okay? So with this look, the center is going to pull because there's a three technique on the right guard, okay? So, and like I talked about earlier, the, the center's pulling. Oh, snap. That defensive end is trying to long arm. So he's got yep. to log that. He does a great job of logging it, sure. seeing it, staying square, running his feet after contact, open that thing up, right? You can see him open up that hole. The tight end understands, hey, the center's pulling. He sees him log that defensive end. He has to go around it. Does a great job of keep kicking it out, kicking with that left shoulder, keeping his body in front. Now there's a hole. That's massive, right? So – Coach, kind of your going. left tackle here is maybe the oh. most impressive piece from a defensive guy watching yes. this. He gets the piss squeezed out of him by that Dean. Dean does a great job here. Great and job. He finds a way to slip vertical and still get on the play side backer. Yep, this is a great job. Now, sorry, I'm, backside backer. Oh, you're good. So this is, in my in my opinion, okay. And I tell my guys all the time, this is a four two box, right? So this guy, oh, yeah. he's out of the box. So my tackle understands he is going for the backside linebacker. OK, but at the end of the day, he has a two eye. So like I said before, he's taking the same footwork to try to see if that guy slants to become a three and then work up vertical to that linebacker. Now, I tell my tackles, make sure you have a good split, especially if you have a tight five, because that five is going to try to squeeze the piss out of you. So make sure he's you have a good. Too. <laughs> he's heavy, a heavy five heavy. coach. So I tell my tackles, our, our splits General splits are two foot. I tell my tackles, hey, if he's going to be a, a heavy five, try to get three foot. Try to get three and a half because you're going to get squeezed and you want to have room to work, okay? So I think he's a little tight with this split, but he does a great job doing his footwork. That He sees a little bit of color, so I'm okay with him trying to make contact. And then he drives and gets vertical. Now, like I said before, you want to get vertical and take him where he wants to go and stay on him, right? So he does a great job of, yeah, he he crosses my face and goes outside, but he stays on him and lets the running back run off of him, cut off of him. Yeah. So this is a great job. The guy that's making the hit, that's the backside linebacker that's out of the box. That's a free hitter. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. That's five guards on the field. Okay? So this is a really good job by my guys up front. And you can see I'm, I'm celebrating. I'm excited. I'm very passionate about my job. So you're going to see me celebrate and, and high-five my guys because that's a hell of a job right there. Hell of a job. And a, a wonderful job by the left tackle. For those listening, that backside linebacker looks like he's just reading the H or your Y. Oh, yeah. He's running over the top of everything. And your tackle after the double team, he just washes him. He flips the hips. Oh, yeah. Washes him out to the sideline and creates a seam. Excellent job. Yeah. That was a great job. I'm good with that. And then, I, and I know I didn't really talk about it much, but on the backside, you got the match technique. So you're just basing. Trying to stay square. So you got 65, my my right guard and my right tackle, 75, of just picking it up, putting it down, trying to stay square, trying to base them, just trying to make sure that they don't come in the backfield and penetrate. Because in a game, this quarterback, if he thought everything was just jumbled up in this in this box, he would pull it, it. Throw, yeah. the, throw the RPO. <laughs> so you want you want the guys on the back on the backside, the right guard, right tackle to stay square and stay at the line of scrimmage and not give up any penetration so that that quarterback has time to throw if he wants to, which I don't want yeah. him to. But at the end of the day, I love yards. I love scoring to, scoring points. So I'm good with what he does. Okay. All right, so this next one, inside drill. Okay, this is going to be the same thing. So counter to the left, we have a loaded box. So up front, we got a two-eye to the left on the left guard. You have a three technique on the right guard, and you have all three linebackers in the box. Okay, so this is a loaded box. So 
I'm telling my left tackle, same thing. You're trying to get vertical and you're trying to get the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, because he's in the box. It's a loaded box. There's three guys in line of screen, uh, in the box. Now, the guy that we cannot block is that very backside linebacker. Okay, we cannot block him, so he's the free hitter. We would read him with the RPO, technically, but we're on inside. We're not throwing the ball. Okay, so with this look, my center is going to pull. We have a heavy five technique, just like we saw. We got to get a little split, right? So we we saw, I'm telling my tackle, hey, at least three feet. I think he could probably get a little bit more, right? But you want to have room to work. And you know with the loaded box, you have to get vertical now, okay? So just like we worked. So this is GY. So center's pulling. Another log, right? He understands. Heavy five. We're communicating. He's probably going <laughs> to try the wrong arm. Center pulls logs. You got that tight end. I don't like that tight end's technique at all. But he does a great job of hitting with his left shoulder, getting his body in front of his. Now he's just got to drive his feet after contact. But it's a really good job on my left tackle as well. He sees uh, a little he just color. smokes that two eye into oblivion, smokes. coach. And he sees a little bit of color, so I'm good. He sees a little yeah. bit of color, I'm good. Make contact and get vertical now. I'm I love it. Right. All right, coach. He can... bumps him. I mean, hell, the, the, the dang guard had the easiest job in the world right there. Easy. That guy got bumped all the way to the center. Easy. And like I said, man, that's that brace technique. He just braced yeah. in to wait for that contact and you're pulling the sink. So you can see 77, that left guard. Once that tackle comes through, he pulls him and tries to just block him and base him as long as he can. So that's a great job. Coach, I'm, him. Coach Bradburn, I'm saying, I'm saying a little bit different. That guard does a great job pulling that and gaining leverage and using that to his advantage. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he does. It shows, Absolutely. it shows exactly what you were practicing, Coach. Correct. Yeah. I mean, and that's all I want. I want my guys to take what I'm I'm drilling to game-like scenarios, right? And I tell O-line coaches all the time, you don't just do drills to do drills. You got to do drills that's going to correlate to what they're going to see in the game. Coach, right? don't, don't move the screen at all. For those of you that are on YouTube, it's a little better. But if you if you're listening, right now on the whole right side of the line, there is three red jerseys on the defense, and all of them are completely. There is a white jersey at a 45 degree angle in their way, and counters going the other direction. No, nope. I mean, coach, that's that's literally how you draw it up. I mean, this is a heck of a job here. I would be losing my mind as a DC. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you can't have three guys looking like that. I mean, they're hanging on for dear life here on no defense. Doubt. They're just. And God. you can see, so our defensive coordinator is right here in the black hoodie. Yeah. And you know he's yelling right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's mad. That's my guy, Steve Cisa. Oh, man. But like you were saying, man, like that's all we want. We want to try to stay square as long as possible, see their numbers, keep our body in front of theirs. I mean, this is this is textbook. This is beautiful. Yeah. Right? Same thing, right? My left tackle, number 58, getting vertical, getting the mic, take him where Look he wants to go. Finish. This is a great, great job. Oh, finish that. I love pancakes, right? Finishes it, yeah. Finish that. But who's making the play? The backside free hitter. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. That's five yards down the field, baby. And in a game, he ain't going to be there because we're going to RPO. He's got to drop in the coverage. So I'm good. That's a great play. You can see me celebrating. Oh, this is beautiful. You don't get any better than this. All right. <clears throat> so this is game film of counter to the left. I don't ever watch the wide view. Does anybody want to see the wide view? Because I don't. No. Um, but odd front, though. Here we go. Odd front. And this is why I put it in here, because at the end of the day, we're going to see everything. So this is Mississippi College. Run an odd front, 3-3, three, three, uh, with the extra safety in there. Like, it's it's ridiculous, right? But you can see the techniques that I was teaching. So right here, we got odd front, 3-3 three, three stack, right? My is going to the left. So my left tackle, he is not high knee anymore. He has nothing there. He's going to go through the technique and try to get to the line, the Mac linebacker because it's a loaded box. So he's working to try to get to 42, which is the Mike linebacker. The left guard and the center are going to work that brace high knee technique to number six, which is the very backside linebacker. Okay, so the drill work that I worked earlier, and yeah. I said, hey, everybody's got to do it because you might have to do it in the game. Now the center has some, some drill work already done. The guard has some high knee technique that he's done already. The, the guard's going to pull because he has nothing backside. He doesn't have a three. So the, the right guard's going to pull, and then the right tackle is going to stay in the match. So everything that we worked in the drill is going to correlate to the game light because we see it now, right? So now, obviously, like you're saying, 
because you got a five zero five, your guard and center are comboing from that zero all the way to the backside linebacker. Correct. Yep. Yeah, got Absolutely. And now my guard's gonna pull. He's got the first thing off the edge, which and you're gonna see. Like I, I work the kick out, but the last couple drills that you, the last couple uh clips yep. that you've seen, we see wrong arms. So my guys are logging every time. Right? But you can see I stopped it perfectly. I'm teaching my guys when you're trying to log, you're trying to get square, you're trying to run your feet after contact, you're trying to yeah. get movement so that second pull can go around you. I don't want to just go around the block and just pop body position and try to do whatever I want to do with him. I want to try to body him up and stay square as long as possible so we can get around you. Yeah, so, coach, we we teach when you spill, get vertical right afterwards. Absolutely. It's the yep. idea of like you can take out two blocks at once. Correct. And I, you can see that defensive end's trying. He's trying to do yep. it. But really good job right here. So the only thing I don't like is my left tackle, number 73. He just doesn't get vertical early, right? He turns. He doesn't work that technique that I was working on the Crowther um, with that the Gallup. But he gets the 42. I don't. He's a little high, but he covers him up, just stays with him as long as he can. But I really like my left guard and my center working that high knee and that brace to that backside linebacker, number six. Covers him up. That's awesome, right? We got everybody covered up, but the safety number eight, which is the free hitter, yeah. and he makes the play. That's 15 yards on the field. I'm good. That's awesome. That's a win for me. Really good job. You can see my pulling guard. He logs, gives the tight end room to work, kicks out 14, which is the play side linebacker, and the running back's got room to run, baby. It's a beautiful it's the, play. Backside linebacker's <laughs> having a long day there. <laughs> long day, baby. <laughs> All right, so here's another look. So this is counter. In a game, all right, GT. So this is going to be guard and tackle. All right, so I know I've talked a lot about the guard and the scent of the guard and the tight end and all that stuff, but we also love to pull the, the tackle as well, baby. Okay. Okay, so, this so you're going great. GT against an over front to the tight end. Correct. So we got the tight end on the ball. Yep. So he's on the ball. We got that linebacker walk down. We got a three technique to the tight end side, which is the right guard. All right, we got one linebacker in the box. So I teach my tackles. All right, if it is a two linebacker box, you go into the back side. If it's a loaded box, three linebackers in the box, you go into the middle. If there is one linebacker in the box, that is yours. That is your guy. Why do I teach them that? Because if we can get to that one linebacker in the box, that second puller is going for the safety. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, coach, who I, who are you guys playing here? This is North Greenville. All right. I, th- listen, Coach, I this is what kills me. I'm going to go on a little rant here, and probably somebody from North Greenville is going to text me and call me an a-hole. <laughs> we bitch 24-7 about OCs that draw up five-man boxes against 11 personnel because I'm like, we're, that never happens. Here we are. You're in 11 Got personnel, it. and they have a five-man box. What is going RPO. on? What do we do? RPO. Coach, I don't give a shit. Run cover one. Figure something else out. Get some guys in the damn box. <laughs> Twitter is real. There's I just, yeah, I, I feel like Dan Casey is going to hit me up at any moment. But I told you, five men in the box. Yeah. And this is what, that's like I said, I tell my, my place out and tackle, my right tackle, you got the linebacker. So this is a great look. The tight end has the, he's arcing right here, okay, yeah. because it is counter. The right tackle is going to high knee up to the linebacker. My right guard is going to brace and take that that three technique with him. It's a shade, but like I said before, with it being GT, the center, the uh, the guard and the tackle are always pulling, always, always pulling, no matter, yeah. no matter if there's a three. But this case, it's a shade, which is perfect, right? So you have the center; he's going to base that that shade, and then that that backside defensive end is the read key. Okay, so technically, I didn't get into a lot of depth about this. But the the quarterback is reading that backside end because if he goes with it, he can pull it. Yeah. Okay. But if he doesn't go with it and plays up the field, he'll hand it or he can throw the RPO. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with this. Okay. But this is a great look right here. Oh, God. Five tech. (laughs) So, Uh like I said before. Uh Uh-oh. So, the tight end's arcing because it's counter. The first puller is kicking out. The play side tackle, the right tackle, has the linebacker. So he flows over the top. The tackle has him. Yep. So the back side tackle is the lead blocker. He has nothing. He's going to the safety. Now, I went berserk 
because I was like, 65, how do you get passed by the running back? If you are just hauling butt and you stay in front of the running back, you make this safety block. This is off to the races. Yeah. And you got, I would have been mad at the running now, back. I would have been, been mad at the running back for running past him. Use correct. your blocker. Now, yes, I'm mad at the running back too, but I don't coach that guy. So I'm like, hey, I'm going to yell at my guy first. But at the end of the day, he's 6'6", yeah. 350. He should get passed by the running back. But the running back's got to understand he is following the second puller. Stay behind him. Let him block the safety, and you cut yeah. off that. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, yeah, my guy, he's got to go. But we we got 14 yards down the field. The free hitter was a safety. This is a great play. Coach, really can you play. talk real – can you talk quick about your tight end, what his arc rule is there? Yeah, so the way we teach it here, okay, and I can go back to the wide view. Uh, I know. So the formation that we're in, we are in unbalanced nub tight end, right? So we have a, a tight end to the right, to the boundary by himself. He's a nub, okay? Three receivers to the field, running back to the field. So his responsibility – is to arc for that corner that's to the boundary, okay? Because if we get the corner, that means he's blocked. That means we take care of everybody else that's in the box, and initially the safety we can get to him, okay? Okay, I take it back. This is a six-man box. Technically. Defensively. Yeah. All right, so I take it back a little bit because I didn't see the whole formation for I just looked at the end zone camera. So yeah. I take my rant back slightly. <laughs> but, I mean, still. I, I mean, in our view, he's – I mean, he's technically in the box, but in our view, he was not. So, no doubt, yeah. I, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so this look, he's arcing for the, the, the corner yeah. to take him out of the play, and we got everything else. Okay. Yeah, you can see him kind of get out. I mean, if he's not in the screen, he's out of the box, in my opinion. But well, He's the big out fold guy, so yeah. there's, they're always elite. And it looks like they're stunting here, actually. Yeah. Or someone just getting blown off the ball. I have no idea, Coach. You guys – just decimated them on this play. I mean, there's just a bunch of guys that, I mean. Oh, yeah. This this incredible. I, I love this play. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Coach, I'd I show it at clinics, too. <laughs> no doubt. Coach, so, this is the last one. This is another GT counter play, uh, pulling the guard in the, in the tackle. All right. So, in this view, and I'll go back to the Y. So, this view, there's no tight end on the ball. He's a sniffer. So, in this look, it looks like it's going to be countered to him, but he's not going to go with the pullers. He's going to arc. And in that look, he's the final three player, okay? Because in this look, it's the quarterback running the ball. So the running back is going to go with the tight end to the boundary, okay? And the, and the quarterback's going to read that defensive end and decide if he wants to give it to the running back or run it as a quarterback counter. Well, Q counter. Yep. Okay. So right here, we got the tight end as a sniffer. To the left, two receivers to the left, one receiver down here to the right to the play call. Okay. It's the old right. penny set right here, a little five one box. Oh yeah. So right here, it's the same thing. So in and what we call this is a sink look. Okay. A lot of people call it bear, but we call it sink. This is where you're gonna have a nose, head up on the center. You have two B gap defenders, three techniques, and then two walked up line linebacker type defensive ends, and then one linebacker in the box that's back in the second level. Okay, so run GT counter. Okay, so with it being a three technique and a no head up nose and a three technique on the backside, we're just going to collapse it down, right? So the we're always pulling the guard on the tackle. So the center's got to go back to the three. The guard's got to come down on that zero nose. And then with the guard leaving and going on that zero nose, that means now the tackle has to stay on that three technique. Okay, now. The same rule. So my left guard, he's going to pull and kick. My backside tackle, my left tackle is going to pull, and he's going to wrap for that number 13, that linebacker. Okay. So should be the same thing. It should be a really nice play. The only person that can make the play is either the safety or, or a linebacker caving in um, to the play side. Okay. So this is a really good job of everybody. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. You can see my guard. Really good job my my left guard. Kicking out with his right shoulder, driving his feet. My my left tackle has never seen – I've never seen him move this fast in my life, right? So he pulls, he wraps up, doesn't see anybody, and he just runs. This is awesome, right? So if you're watching or you're listening, it's Q counter bash, and the 5-1 box, the linebacker just goes with the bash action. <laughs> and so does the backside safety. Everybody. So oh. it is a quarterback 
all by himself from the hash down the field for a touchdown. It's incredible. Got my tackle pull in. Yeah, you have a puller and and the ball carrier that had no one for them. Either one of Correct. them. I mean, it's it's incredible. And you have my that eye candy. Clean. That eye oh, candy it's great. makes it so much easier for the offensive line coach. No doubt. So much no easier. Doubt. This is this is this is awesome. Incredible. And this is what I get back to. This is all the variations of counter and being able to run GT and GY and GH or the Q counter with an RPO off of it or whatever action. I mean, it's nightmare fuel for a DC if you run it well, right? Easily. If you just kind of oh, run yeah. counter all right and you only run GH or GY, whatever you want to call it, not a big deal. Right. But when you can start doing all these different variations, when you can run counter to the tight end, away from the tight end, things like that, it, it becomes tough. Oh, yeah. And, and like I said before, like making these different variations, you can't pick up on any tendencies. Correct. Any, because uh, you saw where the tight end was on the ball, you think we're running power or like going to yeah. run zone. But when you, we come back with a GT count, uh, counter, like, I mean, there's just different things. And we've also even tried to dabble in running counter with the tight end on the ball and pulling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just trying to do those things too. Like you can't pick up on anything if you do it like that. I, I know a guy who does that. I'll give it to you after the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I think you can probably guess on my background. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome, Coach. Um, so, Coach, we really appreciate it uh, popping on here tonight. You know, taking your time. You just got done with spring football. I've been begging you to come on, so I really do appreciate the fact that you took time out of your busy schedule to pop on and do this. Um, you know, Matt. You know, Coach, if you got some free time, maybe later on we can get you back on. We're going to get a, a a series of college level coaches to come on and talk about recruiting and how NIL has kind of changed the way it yeah. works. And to be honest, if you have some time and you're good with it, we'd love to have you back on at some point. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love, I love doing this stuff. I love talking ball. I'm actually doing another clinic in person in Huntsville uh, this Friday. So, I mean, I'm, I love talking ball. And like I've told before, like O-line coaches are different, man. Like I'm open. I'll, sh I'll tell you everything. I'll show you anything you want. I'm not, I'm nothing's a secret to me. Like yeah. I might not, I might not tell you, our direct verbiage and all that. <laughs> I mean, I don't want people to know that, but at the, at the end of the day, like we, we're all the same, like yeah. you know, a lot of coaches want to learn and we want to make sure that we, we keep that relationship. I didn't get here by myself. So I want to make sure that I help as many people as I can possible. Look, um, and, and that's why we're here, coach. Uh, me and Matt were former coaches and I think you know this, but we literally built this podcast to help other coaches. We yeah. can't be a part of the game right now for one reason or another. Um, but we want to make sure that we can still a be connected to this community and B we want to give back. And that's why we get way better coaches than us to come on here and teach people football because no one yeah. wants to hear about us. Uh, <laughs> we want good coaches like you. So I, I appreciate it. No, I, I'd the, have, I'll be happy to come back for sure. What's the clinic you got Friday? So it's an O-line clinic. Uh, and I can, I can, uh, advertise it on my Twitter and everything, but it's an O-line clinic in Huntsville, um, where they get high, they get everybody, high school, college coaches, just to talk about yeah. line and it's, You're it's our, uh, part of our, uh, okay. It's this Friday though. We're going to be saying yeah. this. It's next Wednesday. So anyways, if you were in Alabama, you should have gone to this. All right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I, I got invited to do it and, and I love clinics and this is actually my first podcast, but I, I love doing zoom. I love doing in, in person and all that stuff. So, um, just talking ball is, it's awesome. And just getting the word out there and just trying to get people to learn about O-line because we're the most in my opinion, we're the most important on the field. Yeah, you are. I, I'm a defensive guy. Yeah, you yeah. are. And I want to make sure that everybody understands and and uh, learns and, and knows that O-line coaches are, are good coaches. So, Yeah, they're some of the best. Um, and I've been grateful to be around some of the best. Um, a, I'm going to brag I'm a little. I think Matt's one of the best around. Yeah. You know, I've known you. I got to be around Rick Trickett when I was at Florida oh, State. Yeah. I mean, I've just been around so many great O-line guys. And even the guy that came after you at Creekside, we had Coach Robert Spare on, and he talked, and he was very good with the wide zone and inside yeah. zone too. So, you know, the the O line coaches have been really good, uh, especially on this podcast. So I'm I'm pretty grateful for them, and they're just they're fun people to be around. Those those quarterback guys, they're a little, you know, <laughs> I like the O line. They're a little guys, different. So. They're a little different for sure. <laughs> and speaking of that, next week we'll have quarterback coaches. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, coach, we really appreciate you having on. If people want to reach out to you, what's your Twitter handle? Do you mind us sharing that? Yes, um, it's Devin Bice eighty eight. Um, and uh, I'm always open, follow me, DM me, like whatever you need. I got you. Um, I don't have any other social media. I try to get away from that, but I have Twitter. You should. Um, and if you want to reach out and get my number, uh, we can definitely do that as well. 
Um, but I, I'm, I'm open for discussion for sure. Yeah. Like always, um, if you're a little too bashful, you don't want to reach out to coach directly. You can always reach out to us at the board drill podcast at gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter at board drill pod. You can follow us on TikTok, Facebook, Insta. We got it all. We, uh, we run those clips daily. So hop on there and do that. And when you're on smash, I mean, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Yes. Uh, give us a follow. Give us a comment. Rate us five stars on the podcast. If you're not going to give us five stars, don't rate us. Rate us five stars. <laughs> um, but honestly, guys, interact with us. Me and Matt love to talk to you. We literally, anytime I get an alert that someone's asked us a question, we try to answer it immediately. Heck, we got an email from someone and we made an entire episode out of it earlier. So, Coach, thanks again for coming on tonight. We appreciate everything that you do, and uh, we look forward to having you on again. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me.